Hello. Thank you for selecting this uh, video. I'm Mike Luling, and together with my colleagues Frank van Oosthout and Guido Wey, we are studying various ways to control eutrophication in our country. And our country is uh, the Netherlands. As was already nicely presented by Gaspar Reitzel in his introduction to this session, uh, there is one area in Europe where virtually all water bodies fail to meet the water framework directive uh, demands. And this area is a bit hidden here in this picture under the completely red pie. This area is the Netherlands. And we know that those official water framework directive uh, water bodies represent only the tip of the iceberg. A major cause of not meeting those water framework directive targets is uh, eutrophication. And a clear symptom of eutrophication are massive cyanobacterial blooms. So if you would go to our country in summertime especially, you might encounter green soups everywhere. Uh, to the Dutch, uh, unfortunately, this is a rather a rather normal situation, and uh, their behavior is also like that. Well, we can find people, as this fellow over here on the top left picture, doing funny things in the water is kind of gardening. Maybe he wants to do something about the bad smell coming from the bloom. I've no idea. Uh, the person here in the right lower picture, he or she is seem like a bit dancing in the Siena bacteria. Um, the children in the left uh, bottom, in the lower picture here, they are playing with uh, Siena bacteria. And kids in the uh, right top picture, they are fishing in the uh, Siena bacteria infested pond and are quite comfortable with that, having the nets in there, looking at, looking at it, looking at the fish, and afterwards just eat the sandwich. And of course, we are not so happy with that because we are aware of certain incidents in the Netherlands where uh, cyanobacteria uh, uh, at least caused the death of uh, uh, some dogs, also some cattle. I'm just uh, given here as an example there are two cases from 2000, so not that long ago, where some dogs died after they had ingested cyanobacterial uh, material that was accumulated at the water service or washed ashore. And in both cases, golden retrievers of about 30 kilograms died. So one might expect that these, these cyanobacterial blooms in those situations might, could also be harmful to humans, and especially to children when they are playing on the same beach and, and are in contact with the same material. And of course, this means that water authorities try to do everything to prevent exposure to those uh, potentially hazardous situations, and what we are very good at in the Netherlands, which is very pragmatic, is just put up signs, just warn people, be careful, see another material out there, do not go into the water or stay out of the water. Um, you can find those signs uh, everywhere in, in the country. Sometimes they are there uh, all year round, filled uh, with uh, gravity, or even in winter time, it's in, in very low bottom picture, uh, picture there. Be careful, cyanobacterial, but this plant was completely covered with ice. So one can debate whether this is the most elegant way of warning the audience. Of course, our water authorities are very, very busy with implementing all kinds of measures, uh, structural measures, but also measures just uh, fighting the symptoms to reduce cyanobacterial nuisance. I cannot review them all here, yeah, uh, although it would be very fun to see what, what all kind of uh, highly interesting things they are uh, they are doing. Um, I can show uh, uh, this one, for example, which is a, a physical barrier. This physical barrier is meant to, in the screen, meant to keep uh, accumulated temperature out of the water official bathing side, which is in, in the top of the picture. But as you can see already in, in, in this nice uh, photograph, that the wind waves are throwing the temperature over the barrier, throwing over, and once they're in, they will never be able to escape again. So it's a perfect trap, and it functions uh, quite different than what it was supposed to do when designed uh, from behind the desk. Of course, there were many products brought on the market as well, 
Um, unfortunately, we cannot test them all. Um, would be very interesting considering all the claims that are attached. Um, they have one thing in common. Most of them uh, consider themselves Columbus Ag and the solution. Um, we uh, focus mostly on those compounds that we consider most um, promising. And most promising uh, are those that might do something with uh, phosphate and, and chemical phosphorus inactivation. Um, of course, it's also uh, uh, proposed by several uh, companies. They just fill that up with uh, elements or whatever. Uh, also, that uh, uh, although uh, embraced by quite a few water authorities, just to, to make deep water less deep, etc. Um, this is not feasible. We do have that many water bodies in in, in the country. We cannot fill them up all. Um, we still have. Uh, to take care of, of, of the water. It's called the Netherlands, of course. Um, just some pictures of a few of the water bodies. And uh, this is, of course, a selection of green soups, but can be hundreds or thousands of them. Um, if you would diagnose those water bodies, I think all of them uh, would get a diagnosis suffering from hyperphosphatemia. Um, this already gives the water authorities uh, uh, a way along which uh, mitigating measures could be could be taken. We think, however, that uh, in starting mitigation, uh, they should uh, always do a system analysis, a decent system analysis to get hydrology, to get the nutrient flows, and so on. And this is important, and then it it, it also uh, uh, gives you information if you can do something about uh, the water or not. We do have, unfortunately, quite a few water bodies where it's economically not feasible uh, tackling the external input. And this will be the first step, reducing external phosphorus inputs, but this is not always possible. And the next step, of course, could be if it's uh, uh, determined as a problem, could be reducing the internal loading. In this presentation, I will uh, components of a restrict uh, to those water bodies where the internal loading uh, can be tackled and is of a major importance in creating the problems with, uh, for example, cyanobacteria. So these are more the isolated water bodies where either external inputs have been reduced already or where uh, external inputs are uh, much lower in comparison to the over the years uh, accumulated internal phosphorus sources. Um, to, to tackle the internal loading problems in those more isolated water bodies, we have developed a so called flock and lock technique, which is rather straightforward a combination of a, a low dose flocculant with a solid phase phosphate fixative. Um, the idea behind is that the combination of uh, the, the solid phase fixative with the flocculant uh, will create nice flocks in which also uh, algae and cyanobacteria are trapped. They are precipitated to the sediments where the solid phase uh, phosphorus fixative also hampers the phosphate efflux from the sediments. And in ideal situation, you will clarify the water, strip it from particles and phosphates, and will also uh, reduce the efflux of phosphate from the sediment. So keeping the water in uh, a more clear condition or in a situation with less phytoplankton biomass, which would also be beneficial to submerge in macrophytes. Uh, this flock and lock technique is aimed at tackling a bloom and also tackling internal loading. And the reason why we uh, combine the sort of phase uh, effective with the flocculant is that quite often, I have experienced, the cyanobacteria we encounter in outside have a lot of positive buoyancy. In the picture given below, if, if you just add the flocculant, you make noise, create bigger aggregates of cyanobacteria, and they all tend to go up to the water surface, creating problems there. So this is not something uh, the water authorities want. 
uh, by adding some ballast, you can effectively sink them down. And in those deep stratifying water bodies, you can sink them to the sediment. That is, at least for that season, no risk for whatever is suspension, etc. And they can decay there, down there, where the fixative will catch the phosphates being released. The first lake where we applied our flock and lock technique was Lake de Raubraak. Lake de Raubraak situates, situates in the southern part of the country. It's an official bathing site. It's a former sand excavation. It's not that large. It's a couple of hectares in size. And the maximum depth nowadays is 15 meters. Um, however, this site, quite popular, as you can see from some of the pictures, hundreds of people are visiting, can be visiting there uh, daily. Um, a popular site, but it was suffering from, 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 from aggravating cyanobacterial blooms, culminating in a four month swimming ban in 2007 which actually means that the entire bathing season, the lake was closed for recreational activities. Um, in this lake, we, after some years of uh, studying, we developed uh, the flock and lock uh, technique. And we started in the first day bringing in some uh, solid phase uh, phosphorus fixative, which in this case is land and modified clay phospholog. Um, the next day, we put a minimum chloride we added with a little bit of uh, calcium hydroxide uh, to buffer. Um, the combination of a very tiny clay particles in the watch column, uh, cyanobacteria, aphanosomonin in this case with a positive buoyancy, and the polyaluminum chloride created nice flux of, of these compounds and effectively uh, precipitated the cyanobacteria and the clay which was brought in the water column, creating crystal clear water on the second day. And the next day, uh, the, the solid phase uh, phosphorus fixative was added to the water surface and uh, meant to settle down to the sediment and do sediment capping there, so tackling the internal internal loading. And the idea was to make the clear water to make it a little bit more turbid with adding the clay and then over time it would become crystal crystal clear. In, in pictures it looks like uh, uh, like it's given here in the, in the top uh, middle center addition of the modified clay to the water surface and also uh, in, the, in, in the middle picture uh, left on the top is addition of the modifier of the, 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 the flocculant for the mineral chloride and in combination it created clear water overnight crystal clear water uh, here in, in, uh, in, in the left middle picture with two colleagues Frank van Oosthout and Dr. C. Jazeri who is also a speaker in this session by the way um, uh, they are really amazed by the clarity of the water and how fast this could happen. Uh, this site, uh, I think the water depth is about five to six meters, uh, but uh, looking at the bottom, adding clay to such a clear water, to the water surface, um, creates a fantastic uh, a glacial-like lake, very nice blue, uh, blue lake is shown in the top uh, right picture there. Over, well, in some weeks time this clay gradually settled out of the, of the water column and the water transparency increased tremendously. The floater uh, which is shown in the right in the middle right picture, uh, the water depth actually is uh, 10, 11 meters and there was bottom side during the, in the first summer and macrophytes were grown as deep as 9 meters is an incredibly fast uh, uh, response. Total phosphorus concentrations dropped tremendously uh, after the uh, flock and lock treatment. Given here are in red the total phosphorus concentration before application and in green after or median concentrations of above 100 micrograms per liter to around 10 after application. And these total phosphorus concentrations are still that, that low. So already for six years, almost six years, phosphorus concentration have been reduced incredibly. Um, the, uh, uh, one of the major uh, targets was, was the release of phosphates from the sediment. Given here are some results of uh, sediment cores taken at different times before and after uh, the treatment and incubators on the anoxic or anoxic conditions. Uh, this is a 
in, in, in the left panel, there's a clear, clear decrease in the phosphate release uh, of uh, the application of the, of the solid phase uh, phosphorus fixative. Uh, a tremendous drop. It's not zero, but it's significantly reduced. Um, some years later, still the release it's it, it, it's low, and after five years, well, there's a little bit more increase on anoxic conditions, but it's still lower than the situation used to be before uh, the treatment. So that looks rather promising. If we want to classify uh, the lake for some of the just plot mean summer growth for lake concentrations measured over the scene against mean summer total fossils concentrations and in black are uh, the measurements before the flock and lock treatment so the lake was in a eutrophic state and after treatment the lake was clearly shifted to a more oligomesotrophic uh, state so it pushed into a lower a lower left angle which is a a great result for such a system. Uh, it's not just for scientists, but also uh, these kind of uh, funny organisms, scuba divers, have lots of fun uh, nowadays in the water, uh, in this water, because the transparency increased incredibly, and also macrophytes start to flourish, uh, giving much, bringing much more structure in the lake, and also supporting a very nice fish community. In 2009. We decided to repeat this uh, experiment as we did in Lake Raubrake with, with a tiny modification. Um, with the, the replication was meant to happen in Lake de Carl. Uh, also, an official barbing site, also a sand excavation, uh, suffering from sand material blooms and uh, consequently uh, swimming bands. Um, this is just a picture of uh, one of the temperature blooms that occurred there back in the past. In 2009, just before we want to apply, we had already a bloom, temperature bloom of Abnazomon uh, developing there. And this um, water body, yes, well, we tried to replicate because uh, one of the things that uh, we were not allowed to use was the polyaluminum chloride, a big surprise. We did not get a permit from the authorities of using alum. Uh, aluminium uh, uh, salts. Uh, we had to use iron instead, and in this case, the addition of iron uh, preceded the, the, the introduction of, uh, of of the ballast of tiny clay in the water column. Uh, preferably, we would have seen this the other way around. Uh, it meant uh, we had to adjust the, the dosage of the surface addition of clay, the ballast uh, on site. But, uh, Difference were not uh, that big, and all the blocks were precipitated very rapidly. The modification in, in, in this trial was the deep injection in the hyperlemnium of the solid uh, phase uh, B fixative of the lantern modified clay. Whereas in the Grauber, we added this clay to a clear water and made it turbid again, giving it also uh, uh, exposure to, to, to wind influences and water currents. We decided here to target those sites that are uh, that needed to be targeted most, which were the deep, the deeper spots in the, in the lake, and there were more of them because it's sand excavation. Though it's, it, it was not a nice cone shape, but there were different holes in there. So there, the, the, most of the material needed to be uh, deposited, and a deep injection allowed you to do that. And as a benefit, you will also have a clear uh, epilimium. Apple, um, this is just an, uh, a picture showing the addition of iron iron chloride to to the water surface, uh, creating ice flux there. Um, classifying this this lake and using more the the, the water framework directive um, uh, scaling is being used in in the Netherlands where uh, the water based on different quality rate right? ends up in Different categories so going from bad in, in red to excellent in, um, in blue. This one is just based on the, the top water lake growth lake concentrations and then in relation to uh, moderately buffered deep lake category M20 or different categories. Um, uh, what can be saying is that before the application, 
like according uh, just based on the growth like concentration was in a moderate slightly good condition and not always of course sometimes it was insufficient especially when there were massive bloom um, uh, also application of this uh, modified flock and lock and the leg went to a good or excellent status that was nice improvement is already for five years 